Welcome to Move to Meditate. My name is Honza, and in this class, we'll be focusing on Vajrasana Thunderbolt Pose. What you need is two blocks, strap, and a blanket. When you're ready, I'll see you on your mat. Now let's begin in child's pose. Knees wide, big toes touching, extend your arms overhead, and then slowly draw the forehead down. Eyes closed, everything relaxed. Simply become aware of the flow of your breath. Keeping your lips closed as you inhale through the nose into the belly. Draw further breath up into the chest, expanding the ribs in all directions. And exhale all the way to empty. Take a moment to set an intention for this class to keep as much attention as you can on your breath. As you hear my cues, and as you flow through the practice, the shapes are important. We'll be warming up, strengthening, opening. But the priority is to stay aware of your breath. Hmm. Let's begin. Inhale, lift your head up, shift weight forward, and come into Downward facing dog, press into the heels. So in, this, in the theme of tabletop, we'll roll through this, arching and hollowing. On the next inhale, lift the hips up high, lift the tailbone high, draw the tailbone under, round your spine, shift the weight forward, hands are shoulder width distance apart, shoulders directly over the wrists. Once you get into high plank, bend your knees here, glide the hips back through arch all the way to downward facing dog. And go for a few rounds just like that, warming up the spine, heels up high, roll forward, arch, knees bent, hips glide back, down dog. One more. And the next round, as you lean forward, high plank, come down onto your knees, untuck the toes and slowly lower all the way down to the belly. Hands out wide, cobra onto the fingertips as you inhale, lift up, head comes up last. And then continue, a couple more rounds articulating the spine connected to the breath as you inhale rise extend exhale lower down bring the forearms in front of you into sphinx pose pressing into the tops of the feet lift out of the shoulders use your inhale to open across the chest and collarbones exhale pull your forearms towards the bottom ribs tractioning the spine in this class the main focus is to stretch and strengthen the thigh muscles and the hip flexors and also to strengthen and open up the back in preparation for seated meditation in vajrasana Half frog pose is next. Your left forearm aligns with the front of the mat. You may need a strap for this one. Feel a little stiffer in the thigh and the hip flexor muscles, especially if you have a sedentary type of job. In this class, we'll be opening the hip flexors quite a bit. So from here, bend the right knee, press into your left forearm and the left shoulder. Take your right arm back, externally rotate the shoulder and reach for the inner right arch of your foot. From here, begin to pull your foot towards the butt and notice I'm swirling around or 
turning the fingers around, elbow goes up high. Now if you have enough flexibility here, you can pull the heel all the way, then wrap the fingers around the sole of your foot for half frog pose. Now if you're pretty stiff in the front body, you may need a strap around your foot and simply pull it back like that. All right, so all the way down, focusing on a lengthening, pressing away from the ground while simultaneously pushing the heel down, anchoring into the floor. Let's take it to the other side. Slow release, right forearm in front, left knee bends, left hand reaches for the inner left arch, and from here, take the left elbow up and press heel towards the hips, towards the butt. And release. Lower your chest back down in preparation for locust pose. Arms alongside the body, palms facing down. As you inhale, press into the tops of the feet. Shoulder heads peel away from the mat. Exhale, feet up, hands up, float, lengthening the spine, keeping the cervical part of your spine, which is the back of your neck, lengthened and in neutral. Feeling the energy from the toes all the way up into the crown of the head. And release. Tuck your toes under, inhale, high plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up, square the hips. Exhale, curl the knee into chest. Step your right foot forward. Bring the left knee down. Come up onto the fingertips here. Chest up high. And in this variation of low lunge, I'd like you to take the knee past the line of the heel. So not stacking the knee over, but actually letting it relax forward, bringing the intensity of the stretch into the left hip flexor, the front of the left thigh. Now from here, keeping the back toes tucked under, shift the hips back, glide your hips back, into half Hanumanasana or Ardha Hanumanasana, half split pose, but go all the way back until you can sit on top of the left heel. So different variation here. On the next exhale, see if you can uh, walk your fingertips further forward and fold a little deeper. Inhale, come forward. Deep low lunge here. So allow the knee to come forward. Arms overhead. <laughs> Steady breath as you extend the spine. Driving the right knee forward. Stretching the left hip flexors here. Of course, if the deep flexion in the right knee is bothering you, you can always come back out of it, but it's in preparation for kneeling down in Vajrasana. It's a nice way to start warming up the knee joint into a deep flexion. And bring the hands down. Left knee up, step back, high plank to downward facing dog. And over to the other side, left leg up, inhale. Exhale, curl in, step forward. Right knee comes down, deep lunge. Allow the weight to shift forward, glide the hips forward. And tuck the back toes under, glide your hips back, exhale to Ardha Hanumanasana, all the way back onto the heel. Walk your fingertips forward, next exhale, fold even deeper. Inhale forward, arms up, allow the left knee to glide forward, hips sink down, extend the spine with your arms overhead, trace your gaze up towards the sky. And then release the hands down, step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, roll the spine forward. Exhale, down into low plank. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. 
Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward, knees bend. Exhale, step, jump, or float your feet between the hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift here. Let's use a block or two blocks if you need to. If you're stiffer in the hamstrings in the back of your legs and your straight spine, to find your straight spine, you have to go much higher up, maybe all the way up onto the highest point of the blocks, then this is what it's gonna look like. If you are more flexible, more open in the back body, maybe all the way down onto the fingertips. Then inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. One more. And fold. And strengthen the back some more. Hold on to one block from here. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, come all the way up to standing. Feeling the pull of your inner thighs towards each other and back. As you inhale, halfway. Exhale, back up. If this is too much, bring the block to your chest. If it's too much weight on your back, or you can also do it without a block, of course. But if you want more intensity here, inhale slowly back, deadlifting all the way back up to upward salute pose. Two more rounds. Halfway down, let's get the uh, block down. Inhale, come on up, all the way up onto the heels. As you exhale, slowly begin to bend the knees and squat all the way down to toe stand. Once again, focusing on the deep flexion in the knees. If you're losing balance here, bring the fingertips down, but if you can, fix your gaze, steady breath, hands in front of your heart. Next inhale, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, hands down. Shift the weight over to your left foot, bend the right knee, reach for your right foot and pull the heel into your buttocks. If you can, reach with your left hand back as well for standing thigh stretch. Actively pulling the heel in while simultaneously trying to pull the right knee forward into more of an active stretch here. Keep your right hand on the right ankle, left arm up, inhale. And then exhale, begin to hinge at the hips into dancer pose. It's a modified or a variation of a dancer, keeping the heel close to your butt, stretching the right thigh and the right hip flexor. Inhale, come all the way up. Release, and let's take it to the other side. Shifting the weight over to the right foot, left knee bends, hold onto your foot, pull it in. Right hand reaches back. Heel into butt, left knee drives forward for more active, more energizing thigh stretch. Right arm up, inhale. And a variation of dancer, exhale, hinging at the hips. Keep your left heel close to the butt. And slowly back up, inhale. Release, arms up, exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step, jump or float, high to low. Take your flow all the way to downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, curl the knee into chest, step forward. Left knee comes down, deep lunge. Slowly glide the hips back. Deep Ardha Hanuman, half splits. Then inhale, come forward, arms up. Crescent lunge. All the way up to standing. Left hand holds on to the left ankle, bring it in, thigh stretch. And then slowly use your next exhale to fix the gaze, steady breath. Find your balance here in dancer pose. 
Inhale all the way up. Now step back to the middle of your mat. Keep your feet about hip width distance apart. Inhale, arms up, heels up high. And exhale slowly all the way down into toe stand. Keep your arms forward, shift the chest back, knees forward as you counterbalance all the way down into kneeling. For preparation into a variation of camel here. So bring your hands to prayer in front of your heart. Come on up, keep your toes tucked under. And I want you to focus on activating the front thighs, the hip flexors and the thigh muscles, the quadriceps here. Draw the navel in and up, firm through the abdominals, and then slowly begin to lean the weight back until you feel the strong contraction across the front thighs, and then come all the way back up to altar, or stacking the hips directly over the knees. Let's go for a few more rounds here. So depending on your strength and flexibility, that determines how far back you're able to go with the upper body weight. And for one more, really working on energizing the front thighs, untuck the toes and sit back into Vajrasana. Bring the knees closer together. Big element of Vajrasana is the opening across the front ankles and the toes. So I'll give you a couple of modifications here. If this is already um, quite challenging, then I suggest you lean the weight forward, simply stay here. If you can take it further, hands in front of your heart, shift the weight back, feel the weight come onto the ankles. Quite an intense stretch across the front of the ankles. Now if you can take it further, then float the knees up. Having a moment of presence here with a steady breath, lengthening the top of the ankles, and then slowly lower down, and for an arm balance option here, low lasana, um, hands on either side of your knees, press into the tops of your feet, for option one, simply drawing the knees into your chest and then bringing it down. If you can go a step further, then float the feet off the mat and down. A few more rounds. Now, if you can sustain the hold, then go forward, up, and hold, protracting through the shoulder blades for five, four, three, two, and one. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands down from toe stand or low lasana. Take your flow all the way to downward facing dog. Up dog or cobra as you inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Straight to the other side. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, curl it in. Step forward. Right knee comes down, deep lunge, inhale. Exhale, deep half splits, half Hanuman. Let's take one more breath here. Inhale, shift the weight forward. Come all the way up to standing. And bring the right knee up into thigh stretch again. So hold on to the, hold on to your ankle, left arm up, lengthen. As you exhale, variation of dancer, hinge at the hips. If you lose balance, know it's part of the practice, smile about it, and straight back in. Now come on up, release, step back, middle of your mat. Feet are about hip-width distance apart. Lift the heels up high, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, come down into toe stand. Counterbalancing chest goes back, knees forward as softly and gracefully as you can land. 
hands in front of the heart, keep your toes tucked under, thrust the hips forward, inhale takes you back, exhale forward, and a few more rounds. And last one. Untuck the toes, bring the big toes to touch, slowly sit back onto your heels, bring the knees close together. And once again, if this is already intense and plenty for you, then come forward onto the fingertips, stay here as you're stretching across the front of the ankles. If you'd like to take it a step further, hands in front of your heart, lean back. Floating the knees and the shins off the mat. Gaze is steady, the breath is steady. And hold. Float back down. Mm. For low lasana, bring the hands on either side of the thighs. Once again, if you're just starting with this to Create more stretch, more mobility in the wrists and also strengthen the front shoulders and the triceps and your core. Simply press into the tops of your feet, drawing the knees into chest. A few rounds just like that. If you want to take it a step further, a little float. And if you can hold, come on up and hold. <laughs> And lower down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands in from toe stand or low lasana. Take your flow. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lower down onto your knees. And let's get into seated meditation. So for this practice, you have a few options here. If the flexion of the hips, either due to some discomfort or maybe lack of flexibility in the front thighs is an issue, then bring the block right between the shins, right between the ankles, keeping the knees closed, sit down like so. You could also use another block if you'd like and come even higher. Now, if you're on hardwood floors or tiles um, or stone floor, then I suggest using a blanket or something that's a little bit more padded underneath your shins, the knees and the ankles. And of course, if you need the block, you can still slide it in like so. All right, so once you find um, a variation that works for you, allowing you to keep your spine upright, then simply rest your hands on the top of your thighs. Hmm. Pull up through the spine, lengthening, growing out of your spine. Feel the lightness at the crown of the head. Relax your face, relax the jaw, relax your shoulders. And building on the concentration practice, we'll engage in Anapanasati breath work. It's an ancient breath work that's very, very simple. It's the most common practice used in what is nowadays called mindfulness or mindful practice. And it is simply using the breath as an anchor into the present moment. Begin by becoming aware of your breath.
There are generally three areas that you can feel your breath. It's the cool and the warm air around the nostrils with each inhale and exhale. It's also the rising and the falling of the chest and the expansion and contraction of your belly. Now, if you're not used to sitting down for prolonged periods of time without a back support, the tendency of your body will be to round the upper back and jut the chin forward. Bring awareness to your spine and grow as tall as you can. Allowing the shoulders to relax. Allow the shoulder blades to glide down the back. Slight tuck of the chin in and down. Clearing uh, the channel from the base of your spine all the way up into the crown of the head. Anapanasati breath is about finding the smallest possible area that you can focus on around the nostrils. So let's start with a wider area. As you inhale, simply feel the sensation of the cool air entering the nostrils, brushing against the inner lining of the skin inside of your nose. And notice the subtlety of warmth as you exhale and push the air out of the nostrils. Begin to narrow the focus down on a smaller and smaller area. Just bring your attention, sharpen your attention to the bridge in between the nostrils. And the moment you realize that you are lost in thought and you have forgotten to place your attention on the sensation of breath without any concern, without any self-judgment, Simply become aware of your breath again and narrow that attention down to the small area in between the nostrils. As a matter of experience, the reality of our lives is always in the now, always in this present moment. But most of the time we forget about this fact and we're simply lost in thought. And it takes a little bit of discipline and regular practice to simply re-emerge, to remember and recognize that what we're looking for, a sense of fulfillment, a sense of contentedness, a sense of happiness out of life, is always here, always now. It's a matter of shifting of our attention. A gentle reminder that all you ever have is this present moment. 
Any thought of the past is simply a thought in the present moment. Any thought or anticipation of the future is just another thought in the present moment. So use this practice to begin to give yourself the gift of present moment awareness. I'd encourage you to stay here for a few more minutes, building up and working towards a regular practice twice a day for 20 minutes. Could be at the end of your yoga practice or simply a sit down, carving out a time for yourself in each day to reconnect, to remember. As always, if you'd like shavasana at the end of the practice, lay down on your back and relax. Thank you for joining me in this practice and I look forward to seeing you on the mat again. Namaste.